Good evening, we're with the International Dyslexia Association Oregon Branch and we're going to be joined here by one of our students who's on our panel and she's going to share her story. Really excited about this interview as she's going to discuss college and what that application process has been like and advice for other students that might be going through that process as well as she's going to talk about goal setting. So. Really excited to bring you this episode uh, here on our Instagram live channel. So make sure you're following at Dyslexia You Are Not Alone. As well as if you have comments or questions, please drop them uh, tonight. Or if you're more comfortable, you can always email us at the International Dyslexia Association. We're on a call or actually on the live? Why don't I... Um... I'm going to send you an invite. Can you, I'll go back and then I'll go live. And then can you follow me that way? Can you click on my little circle? Will you, you'll see my little circle light up. All right, cool. There we go. Yay! <laughs> uh, audio is okay though. You can hear me still. Yeah. Awesome. Well, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us what grade you're in? All right. Um, I'm Ariel, and I am a senior now, and I'm going to be graduating next year. And well, this year. Sorry, I said the wrong thing. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> Anyways, I'm a senior this year. I'm graduating this year. Sorry. 2021. Yeah, no. We're, yes. I mean, it just turned over. So we're all still putting 2020 Anyways. on. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And I am a dyslexic person. And, yeah, I just really enjoy just spending time with friends and family and just doing little artistic things i'm really artistic um oh, so. i can't wait to hear about this um can you tell us though why don't you start us like back like when were you diagnosed with dyslexia and what has that process been like for you okay so i was diagnosed in the second grade uh so fortunately really really early which is amazing for a dys dyslexic person um it really helps the process and understand like uh, what's happening and that kind of thing. So it really helped me in the way of confidence and uh, getting myself the help that I needed from friends and professionals and that kind of thing. So what was, was it like? Really... What was it like before then? Was it, were you? Oh, right. yeah, I was really confused. I didn't know what the heck was happening. And, like, I couldn't figure out why other kids were faster at reading or understood reading as much as I could not understand it. So, like, it was a very confusing and frustrating time for me. Oh. What, uh, <laughs> how'd you cope with that? Do you remember how you, like dealt with that or was it not until you got diagnosed and kind of understood what was going on that things started to really get better for you yeah well um my family is a very open family like we tell each other a lot of like everything mm -hmm. so I was really open to my parents about like <laughs> this really sucks like <laughs> what is up <laughs> um <laughs> so uh and then we knew that my dad was dyslexic, so, and dyslexia runs in the family, usually. So then I got tested, and then we were just like, oh, that's why it's so hard. So it kind of gave you that, like, reason for why things were kind of tough for you in the classroom. It almost, uh, it didn't make it so you know obscure it was like it was that it gave you yeah. that definition of what was going on okay yeah and before that I didn't really know who I was and I didn't really 
figure that out all that much. And then even when I was diagnosed, I didn't really know who I was because I was still like really, really little. Yeah, um, for sure. So then I kind of defined myself as a dyslexic person. I didn't really have my identity yet. Um, so that was really interesting uh, working out. And then um, in middle school, I started to find myself and started to realize, oh, this is Ariel. This is who I am. This is I'm not defined by these borders of dyslexia anymore. I'm my own person. Totally. So it sounds like you have some outlets that kind of help you like discover some of this stuff. Like what are some of those outlets and what does that look like in your life? Well, um, as I said before, I have a very open family Mm -hmm. and we basically tell each other everything. (laughs) Um, so that has really helped, um, just talking with them. And then my friends, uh, have been really supportive too. Um, and then just, uh, personal reflection and personal Mm -hmm. growth, um, and just being honest with myself too. So amazing. (laughs) You, I want to, I want to talk about something that you do. You have like this goal setting Thing in your life can you talk about that or shed light because I think people whether they're parents or students you know they're all going through these challenges and you kind of like develop this goal setting for yourself like what is that how does that work for you well <laughs> I okay I'll put it this way um <laughs> I get really stressed out if I don't know what comes next so I like to set goals for myself and set borders and like guidelines for myself in my life like I like to be 10 steps ahead of everyone else okay Um, so basically what I'll do is I'll set umbrella goals for myself so big overarching goals of like one day I want to go live in Ohio. Um, Okay, but how is that practical? How is that actually going to happen? And then I'll set smaller goals to support those bigger overarching goals, and then set up like baby steps to reach those smaller goals, and then therefore (laughs) reach those larger goals. Um, So... So it kind of becomes a, so basically you, you can almost reverse engineer it for yourself. Like you're like, Hey, I want to go here or I want to do this. And then you're building the staircase to or yeah. the pathway, whatever to that process. How did you come up with this? And like, where, where did this stem from? Um, to be honest, I'm not really sure where it came from. I just, okay. Well, actually, my mom is a very organized person, and she just plans everything out. Okay. So, um, I might have gotten it from her. I don't know. But anyways, yeah. But But it it, works. It works for you. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But anyways, yeah, I just get really stressed out when I don't know what's happening. So... Does that, and then once you have that plan, does the, does the stress go away? And is that filled with confidence and like, like energy and like positivity? For the most part, when I first like get that first baby step, then I'm just like, okay, now I can relax. Now I know what's happening. Now I, I'm on the track of success. Okay. I want to ask a question on this topic. If you stumble on one of those steps, what happens next? Well, then I do corrective action, I like to say, um, and mend those goals to where, therefore, they are reachable and are successful. And life's not perfect. Life's not going to be all the OKs and everything's perfect. No, that's not reality. So basically, I like to make my goals wide enough where there's room for error but it's specific enough where i'm not going all willy-nilly and all over the place so so it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't crush your self-esteem you just kind of refocus and readjust and have 
That's amazing. That's so awesome. I commend you on that because I think that <laughs> takes a level of maturity to, to get to that point and a persistence, right? Like you're continually like fine tuning it as you go and, you know, redrafting if you have to, but that's oh, not, yeah. not the end of the day, not the end of the world. Just, just a little bit of edit. That's, I want to get to, I want to get to your art, but before that, mm -hmm. what have you found that has helped you most in the classroom? Because I think a lot of students would like to know, like, are you using assistive technology? Are you using extra time? Like, what, what are some of the accommodations that you have found most helpful to your process? Usually, um, I, usually, not all the ways, but uh, use extra time. I use a lot of extra time. Um, yeah, if I have more time to think and think things through and actually process things, then I'm usually in like Flynn. But um, I also use Grammarly a ton in English and that kind of stuff. But yeah, the uh, using other words to substitute for a greater meaning, that's always helpful. Totally. Uh, I think we can all relate to that as dyslexics. Like it's a time disability, right? Like yes, just need a little bit more time to execute, but it's we're capable, right? It yeah. doesn't affect the IQ. It doesn't affect people's intelligence, but it, just a little bit more space and opportunity to use a Grammarly or use a spell check in, in one of those environments. Yeah. And then um, it's kind of funny because um, I only use this extension called read and write for like two weeks, I think, in my junior year, because my uh, paraeducator uh, suggested it and was just like, this is the greatest thing in the world. This is awesome. I was just like, OK, I'll try it out. And then I tried it out. And I was just like, OK, <laughs> this is a little bit more um, in depth than I need. Um, so I was just like, OK, I'm gonna go back to Grammarly but it was really funny I used it for like two weeks and I was just like okay I'm done <laughs> and I think that's part of it right it's a little bit of yeah. trial and error to see what is actually what what is the technology that's going to help you get to your <laughs> to your goals or to your what you're trying to achieve in the classroom and yeah. it, there isn't a silver bullet here like there's no, no no such thing as that so it is very individualized I'm glad you're like but I'm glad like you took the time to like, okay, I'll try this, I'll give it a good effort. And then, but then to toss it aside, if it's not the right thing for you. Yeah. I think the level of, again, a level of maturity and discipline. Uh, okay, so talk to me about your art now, because is, is that a way for you to kind of like change course of action and just get out of, get out of the normal routine? Or, and what is that? And what is art to you? And what are you doing with it? <laughs> Well, um, I love art. My whole family is just completely art gifted, I will say. Um, but art is just basically a de-stressor, a way to express myself in a different way. And it's, I always say it's like a different language. So um, it's a way to express myself without using words or acting out or anything else it's just a way to de-stress and take something off of my shoulders that's weighing heavy fair what so are you painting are you what are you doing <laughs> all different types of art ceramics i paint i draw i do collages i do a whole different variety what's your favorite do you have a favorite i love ceramics a lot okay. and i love drawing a lot do, can i ask do you see the world in pictures like do you see yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm a total visual person if you line up kinesthetic visual auditory visual all the way pretty much it's amazing okay so college what's that process been like and because I think there's a lot of like parents and students that 
hear that word and they're like, what do I do? Like, is this possible? Like, what, what, what's your thoughts on college and how's that process been for you? Luckily, it's been really smooth. Um, thankfully, I am very, very blessed in that way. But anyways, um, I was thinking about college way early, like in elementary school. Um, so I kind of set myself up really, really early, which really helped. Um, so I got a college bound scholarship. And I was like, I'm going to do this college thing. And this is what I want to do and all that. And then um, something went haywire. And I was like, that doesn't matter. I'm going to still do it. So anyways, um, plans changed a lot. I will okay. say that, but I am going to two different colleges now for sure. And um, also, uh, both my parents went back to college uh, after me. But anyways, which was really cool. So I got to see them go through the college thing, and that, that inspired really cool. me more. So anyways... <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, in August, I'm going to be going to a Bible college in Ohio, Cincinnati, which I'm super psyched about. That's um, awesome. It's a nine-month thing, and um, then after that, I want to go to Clark College and do uh, uh, two years there. Very cool. Do you know what you want to study at Clark, or...? Yes, uh, I want to do culinary arts, but that may change. I don't know. Okay, fair enough. That's awesome. And that's so cool because the Ohio thing example that you said earlier was a real thing. Like it <laughs> kind of came to permission with the steps. You also, along with goal setting, and we've seen how this works in your life, but you also have some like philosophy that you like yeah. – Drop. Can you shed some light on that? Because I think it's really powerful stuff. Well, um, I am a total optimist. I try to see the whole world in the po most positive light that it can possibly be in at all times, if I can help it. Um, so, yeah, that was really the spark to the flame of my senior quote um and those were just the things that i thought of that really boiled down to basic human existence of harmony so if we all acted like that that would be one heck of an amazing world so you're you're the trendsetter here you're starting it. <laughs> so can I ask what your advice would, like if you had, do you have a line that you would give to students or educators or, or parents? The, the rule on this, on these talks is that the guest gets the last word. And I'm just curious what that would be for you. Never stop fighting. Just keep on trying and keep on searching for those who can help you and can get you started again when you feel like the world is crumbling down there's always people out there that can help you and are willing to help you you just have to seek them and find them and keep on working at it at your hardest and you will get there eventually <laughs> Wow. Okay. I couldn't have said that better myself. Um, it's amazing. Uh, we wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. And I have no doubt there's going to be special things ahead of you. But I think the one thing you really need to know is the positivity that you give the student panel and the Oregon IDA is so real and just you're an inspiration and you have a whole community behind you rooting for you. So know that as you go forward uh, in your endeavors. Thank you.
And thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us on a Monday. And oh yeah, we'll be we'll be rooting for you. Have a good night. And you guys have a very good day and a time and a good time. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Bye.